This is a quick review of the Mercedes E400 2018 Formatic Coupe. Uh, just to look at the exterior, um, these are 19 inch AMG five spoke wheels. Um, look really cool if you look at it. Uh, it's got kind of a three dimensional look to it. I also have the Michelin Pilot Sport 4S, which are my summer tires, which are really cool. I noticed the handling improved with these um, in terms of cornering. Uh, when I'm not in the summer season, I use the Pirelli Cinturado all season run flats, which is what the car came with. Um, tail lights are really awesome. You get this cool crystal pattern inside of them, which looks really cool, especially at night. Um, here's the logo on the back, which also, if you push this, it opens, and that also serves as the camera when the car's backing up. This will flip up when you're backing up. Uh, it also has the kick function. If I just kick here, the car closes uh, the trunk automatically. Real exhaust tips in here. They're not fake, if anyone cares. Um, here's the air intakes. I don't know if they're functional. Um, really cool multi-beam headlights. Um, these light up in a really cool pattern when you turn the car on. Uh, it's very much an attention grabber for other people at nighttime when you turn the car on. Um, can't really demonstrate right now. Uh, this is the front logo, but also serves as the camera system for the autopilot function, which I have, which is amazing. The car changes lanes by itself. Um, when you're in cruise control, it basically drives and turns all on its own when you're on the highway. Um, you can even take your hands off the, the wheel uh, for a period of time and it'll drive by itself. Um, but it'll warn you after 10 seconds or so to put your hands back on the wheel. It's not quite a Tesla, but um, it does have that functionality, which is really nice. So, I'll look inside. Uh, look at the cool those bumps on the hood, which are really cool. It makes the car look really muscular. Um, I have the combination of the analog and digital display cluster here. The speedometer is digital or whatever you change this to here. Um, you can modify that to be different options like fuel consumption, mileage, things like that. I actually kind of like having the analog gauges on here, but a lot of people get this as a fully digital speedometer. This is fully digital here, which is um, the navigation. These are the fast buttons. You also have your media controls for your audio, your radio, things like that. Um, the car also does support Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, which I use Android Auto and it works great. Um, you have the adjustable LED um, lighting inside here, which is really cool. You can change it to a ton of different colors. I have the Burmester. Um, this has the panoramic sunroof, which is really cool. Uh, it's perfectly big enough, in my opinion. What else? Um, you've got these touch controls here. Um, this has the heads-up display, which you'll see here. We zoom in. It's a really cool heads-up display that I have as an option. It's got the cool clock. Um, plenty of space in here. I also have the two USB ports and an SD card slot. If you want to play music through those, um, I have a bunch of different things I do. I have lossless audio uh, for some music albums that I like on this um, USB stick, um, which works really well. But I also will typically, if you open this up, um, will use my um, Google Pixel in here with this, and then you get Android Auto. This is also has a wireless charging station for your phone and your cup holders as well. Uh, what else? Um, plenty of space in back, really. Um, a decent amount of space. Um, it's not huge, but it's workable. Um, you've got, when you want to get in the car, you just flip that little control over here, and when you're outside, and this automatically moves forward so people can get in. Just flip it right back. 
Um, the Burmester sound system is amazing. Really, really good. Um, I would also say the quality of this um, control is really, really responsive and nice. Um, you can use this like a touch pad with your finger. I don't really do that. I use this dial quite a bit more frequently. Um, for example, um, with this, you know, you can, in the map, you can modify the distance, but I usually use it for switching between album tracks. And, um, so yeah, it's great. Uh, it's nice and fast. Um, like I said, you know, you also have the um, Android Auto, which also works really well. Um, only thing I have as far as a complaint with Android Auto is it doesn't fill up this whole screen. Maybe because the screen's so huge, it puts an Android Auto logo here, and then everything else is over here. But I did notice with Apple CarPlay, when I tried that, um, it fills the whole entire screen. So that's something worth noting, um, depending on if you're an Apple or an Android person. Um, the turbine vents are really awesome. These are super cool. Um, the car itself, the engine, is a V6 bi-turbo, 329 horsepower. Um, there's three different sport uh, driving modes on here. So you have comfort, well actually more than that. You have eco, which you would probably never use, but it saves gas. Comfort, which is what it defaults to, which is really nice. And then we have um, sport mode, which is quite a bit, um, I guess, peppier feeling. And then you have sport plus, which is really, really like ultra sporty. And then you have individual where you can actually customize the feeling of the, um, it's like the engine feel and the steering. Um, this doesn't have the air suspension on it. I should note um, it has the, um, I guess, the, I think they call it adaptive suspension, just standard suspension. There's nothing crazy about it, but it feels really good. And um, yeah, what else would I say? I love the car. Um, I'd say in comfort mode is typically how I drive it. It's got a nice, comfortable feeling to it. But when I want to kind of have fun in the car, I'll typically put it into Sport Plus. And the car has really incredible acceleration. It's, uh, I would say, 0 to 60 in 5 seconds. This is the 4Matic, so it is all-wheel drive. And one thing I would note, too, for anyone that owns this car, um, definitely make sure to reset the machine learning in the car. Um, you can find YouTube videos on how to do that. There's a pattern of um, ways that you can step on the pedal um, when you turn the car on to where you can reset the car as though you just first driving it. The thing about Mercedes, most of them, is they actually learn the way you drive. So if you first get this car and you're driving it and you're driving really aggressively, it will adapt that way. And I noticed um, I tried doing it that way once and the car was really, really jumpy. So it actually was not ideal. Um, what I would recommend, uh, at least if you're like me, uh, and you might not be, is um, reset that and take the car out and just drive it naturally. Um, don't try to, like, burn out or anything like that just drive like you normally would um, really relaxed and I found when I did that it learned the way I drove when I set it to sport plus mode it wasn't jumpy at all it was actually just really powerful and um, exciting to drive um, really smooth so anyway yeah thanks for checking out the review of the Mercedes E400 formatic coupe 2018 um, I definitely recommend this car I love it had it for a couple of years now and um it's not a lease i actually own it i plan on owning it for quite a while actually it's uh grown on me more and more over time so have a good day